What's going on, people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. The race for top four is nearing the finish line, and we're into the last games of the season. It's Chelsea versus Wolves and on the other side, Leicester versus Manchester United. And we might be in a comfortable position, and through projected results, there's only two ways that we can go down, but there is still two ways that we can go down, and this race has been getting hotter and hotter as the seasons progress. I've got Neil from the Behind the Night Beyond the 90 Leicester Beyond the 90 LCFC podcast. I got that right, right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, from United Central as well. Big up, you guys. First off, is there anything you guys want to say before we start this video? Well, sorry, you go first, man. Nervous. <laughs> that's all I got to say. I'm nervous. Yeah, sounds like it for both of us. You guys have you guys have a much bigger game, both of you, than we do, though. It's, yeah, who, it's whoever it's wins. A... It's whoever wins yeah. gets that that spot. Simple as. Simple as that. Well, we could draw, but I don't think United could draw. I don't think we could, we could even uh, the the uh, the, think, the thought of United drawing is just for me, it's, it's unthinkable. We have to win. Simple as that. No, I know for us, we only need to, if we lose, and I think. Leicester win, we're out of the top four. Or if Leicester draw, bar that we're in the top four regardless if we win and win or draw. So we can be a little bit relaxed, but same way after the season we've had, after the individual mistakes that we've had, we've got no reason to be calm going into this Wolves match. Wolves are a tough side, though. I think you've got a lot of... You shouldn't relax too much on them because that's what they kind of expect you to do. Is it at your home or is it at Wolves' place? It's at our ground, but I think Leicester Wolves are definitely going to be after some sort of payback because we embarrass them on their ground. Mm. Yeah, I think and they're I think definitely they're, a top yeah. side. Sorry, say you go. No, I think I think you know. Um, I think the Norwich game for me just showed how cautious maybe Lampard can be, and I feel like I think it'll be like a one 0 Chelsea, like you know, one of them just dogged results where they get a goal and then they just almost not sit back, but. They're very, very cautious because for me, you, you, you go against Wolves pound for pound. I think Wolves can be can be very, very dangerous. And I think they did they beat you last last year or did they draw? We didn't even beat them last season. They beat us at their ground and we just scraped the draw off an Eden Hazard yeah. equalizer. So they can definitely Excellent. cause damage to us. I think they beat and they beat Man City home and away this season, haven't they? Yeah. Yep, so this is a team that can definitely do damage. And they're also one of the favourites to the Europa League. I know you guys are also another one of the favourites in their side. I do want to talk about your recent form, though, because in the case of all of us, we have slipped at random points. You guys, what happened against West Ham? I don't even know, mate. I really don't know. I think I've been calling it with this manager. I think we're lacking ideas, to be honest with you. Um, he's trying to he's changed things around too much uh, in terms of the system. It's Chelsea, and he got absolutely punished. And then we almost just, just didn't look right against uh, West Ham. West Ham, I know they're fresh. I know they've had a couple of days off, but where's the hunger? Where's the desire to think, you know what? Win this game and make it easy. At least make, not even make it easy, because apparently two draws is going to be enough anyway. But at least come in with the confidence against Leicester and say, you know what? Leicester, we can, we can beat them. We're, 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 we're in a run here. We showed how we can beat West Ham. We destroyed them. But you know what, mate? Mark Noble turned into, into Platini, mate. I don't know what happened here, but Mark Noble, mate, he absolutely run strings around us. Him and Declan Rice, yeah? They just sat back in their in their, bit, their boxes, yeah? But they came out us and we couldn't answer. Like, And he made two substitutions. How, how many substitutions have we got? Five. And Solskjaer only made two substitutions. One, he had to make because of Wan-Bissaka. Not sorry, uh, both Semenso was on the yellow card. So Wan-Bissaka came on. And the second one he made in the 75th minute. 75th minute against... For Igalo. And Igalo's one of the players where he needs to come in and find the rhythm. So we did we just looked absolutely knackered. Rashford was poor. Uh Pogba Bruno, honestly, they were shambolic, man. I wanted him to be subbed off, especially Bruno. Awful. But the problem is uh Oligan Solskjaer does not trust the substitutions. And that for me is very, very concerning because any day is a squad game. I understand that you get me like you can have moments where you know what I mean, um, you don't you don't particularly trust the players. But at the end of the day, you're, you're fighting for top four. You're telling me Quan Mata can't make one key pass to go find Martial. You're telling me Fred can't change something. You know what I mean? You've got to try something. And that, for me, I've always said about Oliver Solskjaer, he's tactically naive. Sometimes he doesn't understand that, you know what? I've got to change things around. And you know what? I'm coming to Leicester game and I'm thinking, they've got a week off Leicester. One game to deliver. One game for Brendan Rodgers to say, you know what? These are poor. Five, which doesn't suit them. And they're going to be poor. And Ben Rogers is to them, yo, listen, 
one game, play for that one game, and just go fight and leave everything on that pitch. That's the worry for me because I feel like we've got no fight in us. We look, we look lethargic, we look tired. And you know what? If Martial doesn't turn up against Leicester, we are screwed, mate, because he's our only hope. Here's the thing, though. We, we all have to talk about consistency because if, if, we, if me and Saeed are going to stand here and be honest, we could have knocked Leicester City out of the top four race. Because, yeah. and we'll move on to should this have, game as well, the Tottenham game. You guys collapsed. I mean, I didn't even see the game personally, but what the hell happened with that one? So the Tottenham game actually wasn't too bad. The thing is, yeah. they had three shots on target, three goals. Harry Kane wasn't even at his fittest. And what happened is that you guys speak of squad depth. The problem is we haven't got any. So we're trying to get to your level. But we're trying to do it just year and year at a time. So you look at last season, we had Yuri Tillemans and Madison. If either one of them two got injured, we had nobody in that centre of the park that could have filled that camp position. So we're looking at other ways and changing it around. But back to the, the Tottenham game, the problem was we didn't really... <laughs> Mourinho set up how Mourinho set up. I think mm. you, got, you guys both know be exactly what I'm talking about. He knew what he was doing. He wasn't going to play attractive football. Sit back, hit him on the counter. Pretty much, and that's pretty much what we did in 2015-16. And it worked to a T. The problem is we're playing a back three as well. We've got Morgan, we've got Evans, and we've got Bennett. The problem with that is they've got zero pace in that back line. So when you're that's playing against cool. Son, when you're playing against Mora, these guys haven't got a chance. So they picked us apart in the first half, three goals, and they're like, right, we'll just sit back and chill which I understand, but we didn't really cause anybody any issues. And Brendan Rodgers doesn't like to change things. I think between us and Manu, it's going to be the battle of who has the better defence. Because both of our defences of recent times have been shocking. So going forward is not the problem, but we're just going to have to see who has the worst defence. Because from what I can see as well, that Maguire 80 million is looking like a right steal for us. And it's making oh, you guys no, look like a bit of a shame, to be off. honest. No, here we go. <laughs> I think Maguire's quality. I think he's been one of our best players this season. Him and him and him and Wan and Fred have been one of our best players. People have not seen it. With Maguire, is we've had the best second best defense before the lockdown. And people don't realize that. No, I understand that it costs eight million. I think Leicester absolutely done us over with the price. But I think because he's English, because he's a captain of not captain of England, but you know, the centre half of England. And I think May Knight were desperate. That's the three things. May Knight were yeah. desperate to sign the centre half. I think we were we were chasing other uh, Kulabali or whatnot, but we didn't get him. And then obviously Harry Maguire came in, make perfect sense. So I, you know what though, you made a fair point there though, because I realised I think Leicester were unfortunate against Tottenham. I think that own goal really, really dented your confidence. I thought, you know what I mean? I thought that was a, probably the worst start you could have. But I think Loris made an absolute world he save, and I think you had a couple of chances where, if on you know, another different day, Leicester would have scored them. So I don't think I don't think Leicester are in bad form, you know. I just, there's, there's two things about bad form is bad form in terms of you go against everything that you've done and you 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 know what I mean you are not you're not confident in the way you play, you don't trust the system, you don't do anything with that. Leicester, however, yes they've been beaten by Bournemouth on a day, but they've been stuck to what they've been good at, the principles of still having chances, still scoring goals. And I feel like that's what's gonna be the edge over United. Whereas we are not doing the basics right. We're lethargic in the field. Our attack is okay with Mason Greenwood, but still the defence was shaky. We don't have Shaw back. I don't have Shaw's back. So there's more questions for, for United and Leicester, which makes me very, very worried. I was going to ask you quickly about um, Brandon Williams. I know he came on briefly and it, it looked like it was given the run around a little bit as well. So on our left side, we've got George Thomas, who's kind of coming from our youth because Chilwell's out and Fuchs is out. So we've had to bring in somebody from the academy who's looked okay. Yeah. But do you think that's going to be one of the main, main weak spots for you that do you think we'll try and yeah. target? I think so. I think, you know, I feel sorry for Brandon Williams. He's coming to a system. He's coming to a place where Shaw was solid and stable. But that's the irony. Shaw was playing badly at the start of the season. And then we brought in Brandon Williams. Brandon Williams has a few bad games. Shaw becomes better. So, I don't think it does a Brandon I just feel sorry for him because now he's coming. He had that, he got, got a concussion and he's not recovered since. Like, he's not really been the same. And, and I feel like maybe, but then again, we might not play that system. We might play in the back five. And then Rashford could cause problems to Thomas in terms of the two, the two, the two uh, Martial and Rashford, if they play up top, they could cause problems in, in terms of the wing backs pushing them back. So I don't know. It all depends on our system. If, if our system is to help Brandon Williams, then he's better. But if it's a system where it doesn't help him, and then we got behind, then, whoa, then I'm worried about Jamie Vardy. 
I think, you know, I think Jamie Vardy's going to be okay because, um, what's it called? Maguire knows how to play against him. Bearing in mind they're in the same team. They've trained each other for a couple of years now. Uh, I feel like it will just be a game where Vardy will get taken out of that position and he'll just be man marked out of the game. So it's the other players like Ian Nacho, like um, Perez, like other players in that position that's got to step up and actually um, neutralize that goal threat because I've, I've got a feeling that Maguire is just going to man mark um, Vardy out of the game. And the problem is he's not a physical guy, he's a sprint guy. And Maguire, he's a bit slow, but I think he'll be able to drop that yard back and keep up for pace with Vardy. Yeah. What do you feel about... Because there was something I wanted to run by, and it's a, I think we spoke about it a little bit in the Cup game as well about, uh, a few weeks ago. Brendan Rodgers, and I've noticed a lot of Liverpool fans saying previously, previously that they're noticing the same sort of similarities between your Leicester side and the Liverpool 13-14 side that I don't want to say bottled it, but the form's just taken a gradual dip throughout the season. The only one to say that is because you guys were so far ahead of us at one point and even further ahead of Manchester United. And we were far ahead from United as well, so we've kind of bowled it a little yep. bit too. And competition's just been poor throughout, throughout the whole season. It's been the so worst top four ever. ever. Yeah, and yeah. that's topped last season, which took real effort to do that. But do you think it's yeah. a case of Brendan Rodgers or do you think it's more an experience with the Leicester side? So... Coming into this season before lockdown, we were 14 points clear of the Champions League. You would have thought with 10 games to go, we could have just eased it out, got a couple of results, but no. Leicester find a way of losing to Bournemouth, find a way of getting draws at home, a nil-nil draw with a penalty save. And you're like, uh, so penalty save against us, against Brighton and stuff like that. Uh, I think a couple of problems as well is that we've got a load of injuries that's helped us out, has not helped us out. So Ricardo Pereira for us has been one of our best players this year. He's been absolutely sensational going forward and defensively as well. Um, So we've lost him. We've lost Chilwell, Madison, uh, Soyuncu. He's got a red card, so he's not available for the rest of the season. Fuchs and Albrighton. Now, the problem is with that squad is that when you've got all these injuries, we haven't got the backup to really play forward and attack and it's a combination of everything. So I think the injuries haven't helped. The Brendan yeah. Rodgers, we had a couple of Liverpool fans on our channel as well. And they were saying, this rem- exactly what you were saying, this reminds me of the time that they, bottled, they pretty much bottled the season. And again, it, it's just reminiscing that he hasn't learned his lessons. So we'll have to see because it seems, things need to pick up from Sheffield and then they kind of dropped off again. And it, it's a weird one because you can't predict what's going to happen. They could turn up, but they also could be abysmal like they were against Bournemouth or abysmal like they were against uh, Brighton. So it's all to play for. Even against Chelsea, we weren't too bad, but Mm. in no way did we really punish you guys or actually challenge in that position to really go on and win the match because it was only 1-0 and it was like, it could have been done. It could have gone either way. The one thing I do want to ask you, and I say it all depends on the last match as well, but Depending on the last match, would you keep Red and Rogers, or would you think to progress further as a club, you need to look for a new manager? So this is a bit of an exclusive. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give you this to your channel. So apparently, from what people that have 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 been reported on, Brendan Rogers first bought a house last year when he moved in. Since about a couple of months ago, they've actually sold that house and started renting somewhere else. So oh. Brendan Rodgers is not the long-term solution for us. He only he signed a five-year deal, but I think his, his idea is he left England with a bit of a joke with what happened with the whole Liverpool thing. Went to Celtic and then realised it's a bit of a one-team league. Came back to the Premier League and he's got, right, I want to rebuild my reputation. So this is a great club. We've got young talent. We've got a squad. We've got a, a, a decent enough squad that's young. We've got owners that will back the manager. So, but... He, he thinks, I think, he'll want to go on to the next level and take his game somewhere else. So I don't think he sees himself as the future of Leicester. I, I would still keep him because you've got players like Madison and Chilwell that will develop and thrive like they have done. Like players like Ian Nacho that maybe have got like five goals, have doubled that and like doubled the amount of assists just in one season. Players like Damari Gray that aren't the best players, but they've chipped him with vital goals at vital times. And like, for example, I think, Ian Asher has a better goal-to-minute ratio than Jamie Vardy so, uh, this season, which wow. has been really, really useful for us because we've been so reliant on Jamie Vardy to score before this. Mm. So other than that, he is, 
he's the. I want to keep him for one more season, see how he does. But between 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 us, I doubt that he's going to be here that much longer because I think he's he's a manager that always wants the next best thing for him. But yeah, potentially, definitely. because of what's happened this season, I don't know if anybody's going to give him that option. Because if you look at even a team like Everton or you look at a team like Tottenham, they've secured yeah. good quality managers that are actually better than Rodgers and that have been found out tactically better than Rodgers as well. That That is a, actually a really surprising thing that you said about him. Rent. Do you know where he's rented out a house? Because that would probably make it more of a guess to where he might be going next. No, no, no. He's renting in Leicester still. Oh, so... But- <clears throat> Gone. Yeah, he's not renting anywhere else, but he is he is still in Leicester, Leicester shit. But it's showing that if he's selling his house and then moving into a rental property, it shows you that you're not necessarily going to stay here for the long term. But we kind of, as Leicester fans, we're kind of used to, we were kind of knowing that coming in because to go from Claude Puel to Brendan Rodgers is, is a completely different style of football and something that we've really enjoyed. But yeah, just come back to your point, the fact that it's dropped off a cliff is, um, it's kind of reminiscent. So, it's, it's the same process that's happening again and again, unfortunately. Okay, cool. I'm going to throw this to side now because I want to talk about United for a little bit. So yeah. Halfway through the season, it didn't look like you were going to be anywhere near a top four race, but you guys have had a brilliant second half to the season. Bar the obvious signing of Bruno Fernandes, what do you think has been a key point for you guys developing in the coming months of the season? I think, obviously, the lockdown has helped, you know what I mean? Um... I thought we were doing brilliant before the lockdown. And I almost thought, did Ole Gunnar Solskjaer need that? But obviously it's happened, you know what I mean? And, and, and you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's been a kind of an unfortunate circumstances. But I thought, we, we, you know what? I thought when we came back from lockdown, I thought Tottenham's going to be a tough game. But can we claw the points back off Leicester? I just thought, is it too much? Is Chelsea going to be that inconsistent to, to, you know what I mean, get away with us? Because I thought, how many points were we ahead of us from the start of season five, was it? From the start of the season? From, no, sorry, the lockdown, sorry. Restart. Um, oh, yeah, I think, I think it, was, it might have been less because you guys, I was v- actually really worried about you guys before lockdown because we were in shaky form and you five. were just climbing. Yeah, I, th- I think it was five. So I thought, could United climb back, especially against Payne Tottenham. But after that, mate, we just went into absolutely serial killer mode. Like, we just kept <laughs> destroying teams, you know what I mean? Sheffield United. Then it was, um, what's it called? Aston Villa. Brighton, we just kept destroying teams. But then I seen Southampton where things started to change. And then we almost like a bit tired, same same eleven all the time. And then it became a case of that second half for me was shambolic what Oliver Solskjaer did. The way he just almost threw the towel and said, you know what, Southampton, you are you're not gonna score basically. And I thought that was a bit naive to think that Southampton they played better than us. And then it creeped into every single game afterwards. It creeped into the game against um, Aston Villa where we were a bit lethargic. And then obviously Chelsea, that was for me the worst game ever, man. We'd never look like we're in the game. And then obviously West Ham, we just got lethargic. People are saying, oh, there's, 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 how Maguire said, oh, would, would, have, would you have bit my hand off if, if you were in this position start of the season? You know what, mate? No, because I would have thought a club of my United stature would have been yeah. at least comfortable in top four. You know what I mean? I, I hate that old saying of, would you have taken this? But sometimes you've got to make football easier. This has been the worst top four ever. Absolutely, for me, worse than last season. The amount of time we bottled it, like Man United are bottling it at home to Southampton, to West Ham. Like seriously, man, two games that you should think we should win. But I've always said, if we, if we didn't make top four this season, it's not because of this restart. It's because of before, before January, we lost to Burnley, lost to Brighton, lost to Watford, who had more more managers than wins. Can you believe we lost to Watford two <laughs> 0 You know what I mean? We lost to um, what's it called? Um, so many draws from Everton at home, Aston Villa at home. And I just thought to myself, I said it in, in, in January, did we deserve top four? But football's the old saying, you take it when you give. And I think, I'm just not confident with this last game. And I think the form, the form suggests that maybe we're, we're doing okay and we're not, we're still unbeaten. We are still unbeaten. The problem is, what that game can my United deliver? My worry is just Leicester with Vardy, the pace in behind. In the actual, would they go for three five two? And their two up top could be dangerous in that system. Brendan Rodgers knows that system. Only going to solve it doesn't, and that's going to be the key thing for me. I, I agree with you to a certain extent, but it's the problem is our back line is not pacey. So I think Rashford, uh, Greenwood, and stuff like that are going to have a right field day if we don't. If we play the same formation, the same tactics that we did against Tottenham, uh, uh, you guys are going to be licking your lips. 
But the problem is though, with that with that formation though, is he's gonna pick Mar he's, he's probably gonna pick Martial and Rashford. And then you won't see Greenwood. He'll play a three five two. I call I called it in a in a United team. I think we should play a diamond against Leicester. I really do. I think maybe use our 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 attacking pace up top and then maybe cause damage down there. I think if we get the forward midfield, we maybe can control the field. Because I feel like Timelos yeah. and Adidi is a different kettle of fish for me. I know you you, you, you haven't got Madison. I know, you, you know what I mean? You're a bit light in that midfield. But I think Timelos and Adidi will control that midfield. Will at least press Pogba. Press uh, and, and, and Matic is very, very slow on the ball. I just, I, I don't know. I'm trying to be confident. I, I think I still think we're going to win 2-1. I feel like there's certain moments with my United with, where Leicester can capitalise on. And if that happens, then why? The the thing is, though, our conversion rate hasn't been the highest of recent. Towards the beginning of the season, we were asking, like, we we're getting two shots, one on target, one goal. Sorry, like, two, shot, two shots on target, one goal. And we'd win games 1-0, 2-0, and stuff like that. Of recent, we've had p players like Harvey Barnes and stuff that are trying to come into the game that have missed just absolute sitters of chances. So... Again, if we get the opportunity to, I'm not confident that we're going to score. Ironically, we should all be going at each other's throats here and being like, my team's the best, yeah. we're going to win, blah, blah, blah. No, blah. no, no. no. It's, it's it's just, this season, it's just that. not been the case, has it? No, no, no. And the one thing I wanted to say, say, I love that mentality you got there that you're not that you're not taking any of this average BS. And that's the same thing that half of Yeah, of course. Down here at Chelsea. That's the problem. I think the problem is, you know what I mean? We, you can be confident and I think you can believe in your team, believe in your manager, but... I always say you got to be realistic in terms of where Man United should be. Like, Man United should be 40 points behind Liverpool. Like, that should never happen. No matter what transition you are, no matter how bad you are, Man United as a whole should not be 40 points. I should not be, sorry, Leicester fans here, but should not be in the top four race with Leicester. I'm no, sorry, right. but, you know what I mean? I just think that we should be, we should have had this secured. And I feel like people saying, oh, you didn't have the quality, Bruno Fernandes, you know what I mean, Pogba, they were injured half of the season, but, I still think United should be in and around there. We weren't in and around there. We we're so many points behind Leicester and, and Chelsea. It's just almost as if we, we've almost just, now the restart has helped us to re recover, re re energize, re you know rethink our forward plans. And I don't know. I, I I think whoever scores first, I think we'll win the game. I really do. And whoever scores first for me has got the ascendancy, and then obviously we'll just keep going and flying and flying. Yeah, I think coming back to one of your points is like you said earlier is that would you, like what you were saying about Harry Maguire you said would you take the position at the end of the season? It's like for Leicester fans, it's because our ambitions are completely different. We've obviously won there the league, go. and we can't expect like that was a one-off. We kind of understood that, but the owners have invested in the squad, and they've got this new tactic of we're going to invest yeah. in young English talent, um, and we're going to try and push forward into Europe. So even if we get Europe at the end of the season it's going to be a decent season for us, but it's just the way that we ended it, saying 14 points ahead and to lose that. And you guys have not exactly been on fire, like winning, win, 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 win. We've There's been draws, there's been losses, there's yeah. been stalls along the way where if you were gone on this unwinnable form, we wouldn't have been able to catch you by now. But so we're just working on the goal difference, working on the points, which we should have had this tidied up. But again, just, just to back to what you were saying, like I think... It, when it comes to the end of the season, we're still going to look back and go, okay, this was an okay season. Uh, this is a decent season. Yeah. We've got, looks like Jamie Vardy's on track to win the golden boot. We've got the semifinals in the AFL Cup. We got to the quarterfinals where we lost against Chelsea, but in the FA Cup and we'll finish in Europe. That will be a decent season for any Leicester player, but it's just the manner in which we've gone about losing. So it seems like we were in a de decent position around Christmas time where we were like two or three points or like four points off um, uh, Liverpool and they just wrecked us at our own ground. And that kind of is where the, the, the spiralling, not spiralling out of control, but the, the downfall began because we were in such a great position. Man, it even looked like Man City weren't going to catch us. But I think the naivety of the young squad and a young manager that kind of let the players get carried away has kind of got yeah. to the fans' heads a little bit as well. And that was part of the issue that's led to the downfall that we thought we could catch a team like Liverpool that have got that strength and depth. And we really haven't to the point now where we are recruiting for our under 23s into the first team wow. in order to get Champions League football. That's the whole thing wow. that we were just talking about there. And it's going to kill the lower half teams of the, of the league the next season, especially next year with the five subs. Mm. That's going to be it's damaging. Gonna, yeah. It's going to make the top six, 
the traditional top six because there are teams like I'd say Everton are going to be challenging next season, uh, like for the top, for European positions. There's going to be teams like Sheffield, uh, so yeah. Sheffield United, Wolves are going to definitely be in there again. This is just going to secure the tops, the traditional top six as the traditional top six, and that's my issue because as as a kind of that not top six but the next bracket down. I feel like this is what the Premier League kind of needs. A, a team like Wolves, yeah. where a Man, Man City can come to them and go, uh, I'm not sure about this, where we all saw a couple of years ago when it was like Man City were winning game after game and it just became repetitive and boring. So I, I kind of want teams like Leicester and stuff to kind of step up their game and, and hopefully they can invest. But like, for example, our owners are, um, are Thai owners that have investment in duty free. I can imagine after COVID, we've like got major losses and stuff like that. So yeah. we're not going to be investing like you guys are. So it's going to make that gap wider in that top six, like a more top uh, traditional top six, like probably it might be even a more, it might be a, a top four or a top six that will kind of sort itself out by March or February. Jeez. Here's the thing. I think Ooh. we should already be having a conversation about the top six because I think two or three of those clubs shouldn't even be in there anyway. So it's a shame if this thing's actually just going to preserve them in it because let's be real, some top six clubs are declining. Some top six, some clubs who aren't seen as top six are going up higher. Like, if I'm being honest, yeah. Arsenal Spurs should drop out. Leicester and Wolves, I think, are close to coming up now. But if that's just going to make, if that's just going to bring back the traditional top six, I think that's just a little bit disappointing. But the, uh, before I wrap this up, I do just want to ask you guys both score predictions. And top four predictions. Uh, I, can't. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't do that. I no, no, no. No one's, say, no one's saying be confident and say, oh, we're going to win 4 0 and finish third. Nah, none of that. But honesty. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> These know. are the ones that get you shut down on Twitter, isn't it? No, but um, yeah. uh, I you don't want to answer it. You don't have to answer it. I'll, say, I'll, I'll put my neck out and say, we'll, we'll win 2 1, and it'll be us and Chelsea that'll go through. Okay, I like that. Me personally, I'd rather take that as well. Said, you? You know what? I've always backed my team, but I think 2 1, 2 1 United. Um, and I think. Not, no, no, no. Yeah, 2 1 United. But then again, have you noticed if, if, if Man United and Leicester were to draw and Chelsea lose, we're Chelsea out. are out. Yeah, if we don't win, oh, so maybe, win or draw, we're done. So maybe we need to we need to go for a draw, and just you know what I mean. Give you us want the United to win a Chelsea loss, or something like that. Well, if we, even if we lo- even if we lose, if Chelsea were to lose as well, then you're out. So maybe we need Wolves as well to help us out. So, oh yeah, you lot will definitely want Wolves to help us out, even if it's just a little bit of revenge for Sunday. But it is worth yeah. it. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Also, don't forget to check out these two guys' channels. That's Beyond the 90 LCFC. I've pointed the wrong way. It's this way. And United Central down below as well. I'll leave their links down in the description below as well and also pin down all their comments. So don't forget to check out their channel too. And we will see you guys very, very soon. Take care and up the shells.